Good afternoon, garden friends. Have you ever stumbled upon a, a photo that just speaks to you and ties in with the direction that you want your garden to go? Well, today's series with the collaboration of some amazing ladies, um, we are doing a series of garden dreams. And what I'd like to do is share with you some of my inspiration on how I want my secret garden area to look and some of the things that I am going to be doing to hopefully accomplish that. So come along with me on this walk as I share with you some of my inspirations. Let's go on up to the secret garden where I can share with you my vision of my garden dream for my secret garden. So come along with me. Okay, so as most of you know, this is the entrance to my secret garden. And look how well my heirloom Eden climbing rose is doing. Uh, this side is a little bit more, uh, uh, vigorous in this side and I think because this tends to get more sun based off of how the sun uh, falls but one of the things that I'm going to be doing is feeding these guys watering them and also as I mentioned I'm going to be planting these clematis or Warsaw Nikes on both sides to intertwine with um, my climbing rose, which is white with a soft pink center on them. So that is one of the things that I have for my um, garden dreams for this area. But let me turn the camera around because I, I want to share with you guys some things that I've started on um, to create that seclusion, that secret garden feel to my garden, even though my, <laughs> my dreams are like massive. So let me turn the camera around and I'll end up showing you some of the things that have got done and then what my dream of how I want this secret garden to evolve to will end up looking like. So let me turn this around. Now, just to give you an idea of what it looked like before, one of the things that I wanted to do was put up the fence along the side of my neighbor's yard because every time I would be recording i'd capture their cars or their license plates and then trying to figure out how i could not expose that okay so some of you might be thinking inspiring garden corner how are you getting ready to make a full sun area be like a secret garden because as you know with the secret garden it is not only the intimacy that it creates but it's about small pockets of sun coming through so the first thing that we did and i had mentioned it before was we got let me turn this around so you can see we got the fence the new fence like i said didn't want to be fussing around with trying, you know, to block out my neighbor's license plates on their car. And then I needed some more space to go ahead and plant my cut and come again uh, flowers because last season I had them in the front row here. Last year I had them in the front row here and they ended up just taking over and they need to be um, in the back of the garden because of how high they get. Now, 
some of the things that are the plants that I'm going to be planting back here to help create that secret garden is I'm doing some cosmos. I got some zinnias. I have some scabiosis. I got some milkweed. Um, and all of those guys will get, you know, 36 to 48 inches. So I think that'll end up adding to uh, the secret garden feel to it. But the major, major thing that we are going to be doing is um, I'll show a photo of the, I don't want to say arbor, but it's like a, a, a single pergola. I, I'll post a photo up here, but, and then a bigger one at the end. But the thought process is we've measured the area out because as you can see, it's a, it's a nice size area. I do have my uh, Texas uh, Vertex Lilac that will end up getting about six to eight foot tall. So what we are thinking about doing is doing sections of this pergola that I, I, I posted up. Um, and then, like I said, I'll show you a bigger picture of it to where it is two sections here, a, a section here for when you come into the, uh, under the arbor. And then we're gonna go another couple more feet and put another one here with the goal to allow the Texas bird tax to get the sun that it needs and then be able to grow the height that um, it needs to be. And then two, that'll act as a canvas once it gets to the, you know, I think it's eight to 10 foot tall because the pergola sections that we're gonna be doing it's not going to be that tall. It's just going to be about as tall as the arbor is. And we're going to do those in white, you know. But the thought process, too, is I was trying to think of preferably a vine that I don't want to plant it in the ground. I want to either have my husband build something at the base of the post to where I can control it and get it to climb up the arbor to help create that inclusion, that secretness of the garden. Um, one of the other things is I moved, I moved this little settee that I had up on my front porch because it was just a little too crowded up there with my pots and what have you. So I'm gonna try to figure out where I want to position that because then on the other side of the Texas uh, vertex lilac, uh, we're gonna put up, I think he said, probably two more sections of those arbors. And like I said, this is what I'm shooting for, this, this photo here. So while my garden dream of my secret garden <laughs> isn't just about planting plants, it's, we're always building something um you know this is this is this is a long haul i am not looking for this to be done overnight even though my husband says <laughs> that's how i operate but you know i want this done right you know so we're going to take our time i'm going to walk you guys through the process of what we end up getting accomplished now the one thing that we are going to do is the fence we're gonna go ahead and get it stained the slate color like the rest of the fence. I'm also doing this sheet mulching behind uh, and get that laid and the um, compost on it. And then two, the other thing that I had mentioned is the extension of the raised bed that is going to house my sunshine ligustrums and newly grass that's here on the end okay so just to give you a visual sorry about my shadow this is the area that i'm going to take the end of 
the flower bed where my boxwoods are and run it all the way down and enclose it that whole area with the timbers and then let's just show you back here I don't have a lot of space that I'm gonna have you know to work with for let me get out the way um, for the flower beds but it's a long distance it may be thin but you know us gardeners will make anything fit <laughs> but I think it'll look really pretty especially for the things that I'm going to be putting back here so I'm going to go ahead like I said I'm going to do the sheet mulching uh get the cardboard down and get the compost on that getting this bed ready um with the cardboard and the compost for the sheet mulching um, because the plants that I'm going to be planting back here along the fence I'm actually growing all those from seed so they're not ready yet but you know like I said it may not be a big spot but it's going to be enough for me to add that that next layer into my garden but then it's going to give me more more space to be able to plant stuff so you know that's the beauty of gardening you know we my my husband says he gives me an inch I take a mile you know but um, that is one of the things that I I want to be able to create so that this is more like a secret garden you know because like I said you can see I, the sun is hitting me dead on now mind you on this side it's not too bad but when the sun starts to set on more so and come down it'll be hitting this but I figure by having those pergolas up here they're going to filter a lot of that direct sun but then like I said guys if you have any suggestions for me on what I could possibly put in a, a container or if I have my husband build something for me to where it will climb, it will be beautiful, it will, you know, speak secret garden, please leave it in the comments, you know, because I'm like struggling um, on what I think would be a good thing to have as a climber on the pergolas. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing what my garden dream is for um, my secret garden. And like I said, this is a series that we're going to be doing with the other ladies that I am collaborating with. Okay, so let's just go ahead and introduce the other collaborators. Welcome, Kim, with Backyard Blooms with Kim. Hi, guys. Kim here. Welcome to Backyard Blooms. Today's video is about garden dreams. And my dream for my garden this year or this spring is my cottage garden. When I talk about my cottage garden, I just feel like there's no rules. Like there's no rules that apply except for putting taller things in the back and shorter things in the front. Because in my cottage garden, I want all types of colors, lots of different colors, lots of different textures, and lots of different plants. And I want lots and lots of plants. Now, this cottage garden right here is quite different this year, and I love it because these cryptomeria trees behind me are providing some shade. So not only do I get shade, part shade, and sun, so I get to play around a lot this year. So like I said, I want lots of color, and I want lots of different color. So this is going to bring a lot of real prettiness against all this dark green that I have against my cryptomeria trees and my juniper bushes. So really excited about this hosta and then another hosta that I have is this one right here and this one is called Shadowland Diamond Lake and this is the hosta of the year it says I have no idea which year because it doesn't say but this one only gets 17 inches tall so I'm not going to find anything that's going to get huge as big as me because I don't have the area for that but really excited about this diamond lake got two hostas and I have lots of more room for hostas too so as I'm out and about in different nurseries, then I'm gonna be able to find some. I bought most of these plants right here that you see in front of me at King's Nursery in Matthews, North Carolina. So I've got this cute little bird. Look at this, you guys. Isn't he or her cute? 
And then I'm going to put some of the diamond frost in that one. Now this one's just an annual, but it will last me all the way till frost. So we're going to put that in there as well. So these are going to go towards the middle. These hostas are going to go in the middle and kind of like tucked down near my junipers. And then I got some primrose that is a perennial and this takes shade as well. So to bring me some really pretty color. And then I bought some columbine. Now this one's called winky purple and white. Real pretty color is zones three to nine as well. And then this takes shade. So this will go either towards the middle or part shade. So this is gonna be in a part shady area that I'm gonna plant. And I bought two of these columbine. And they get some height to them as well. So I'm really excited about that. And I love the variegation on this, you guys. Love, love the leaf structure on this one. Very pretty. So I got two of those. And now in my cottage garden, I like really spiky stuff. So I thought this Agastache would fit that bill. And I love the color of this Agastache. Just love it. I'll bring the camera closer so you guys can see. But this will bloom in summer and autumn. And this one's called Guava Lava. <laughs> Guava Lava, I like that name. I can either plant it up here where it's got morning sun or in the back there where I can see the spikes coming up in um, where it gets sun in the late afternoon. Every plant that I have here, almost anybody can do. About two of those. And then of course I have lots and lots of hellebores in my garden already and I love them. Like this plant right now gives me so much joy in the winter time going into the spring and they're just beautiful. All right, so I've pretty much gone over the plants that I bought today at um, King's Nursery. And like I said, I'm going for texture and color, lots and lots of color, and I want fullness. So anyways, I'm excited about the varieties of plants that I talked about today, and I'm gonna place them around. And then while I'm, plant while I'm showing you this video, I'm gonna show you my cottage garden, what it looks like right now. Welcome, Emily, with the scent of a garden. Welcome to my backyard and welcome to another collaboration with my garden friends. This collaboration is about creating a garden of your dreams. And in my case, I have dreamt about creating this space for quite a long time. Ever since I came back from a trip to Bali, I wanted to transform this space inspired by the flora that I experienced while in Bali. Another source of inspiration for this space is a landscaper that I follow on Instagram who lives in Brazil, who does amazing work. So I am standing in the middle of what will be the Zen garden bed. So one feature that this garden bed will have is a fountain that will go right here behind me. And there are some other garden statuary that will also go in this garden bed. I use Keynote to create my inspiration boards. And this is the inspiration board for the Zen garden bed. Some of the images featured on the inspiration board are my own. Others are screenshots from Flora Nativale. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's the landscaper in Brazil I follow on Instagram. On this board, you see the fountain, the Buddha garden statuary, chairs, and a thrifted coffee table. The lights are from Ikea that I want to hang to look suspended from the air or from the sky. That will take some research to achieve. In between the cracks of broken concrete, I want to plant more sedum and succulents around the edges, similar to the planting in the Kintsugi garden bed, or maybe I'll add some mondo grass. I'm not quite sure. Maybe I'll do both. Let's see how it works out. Uh, because of the leaf structure of the calla lily, I think they will work around the border. And you see a variety of alicotia, caladiums, dragon begonias, um, all of which will add color and more texture. And as I go along, the artistry of the garden bed will unfold. 
So let me turn the camera around and show you the space. we have a little light remaining as I said that is the fountain and that will go right over here normally two chairs and a coffee table go in this area as well the goal of this area is just that to come relax and enjoy outside so there are different types of alicosia Here's one. This one's going to have to go in a container because of the broken concrete. And then you have the pygmy palms and the giant bird, birds of paradise. I love the contrast of the blades of these leaves against the big uh, swaths of these leaves. Then you have, uh, there are, then there are two aloe vera one I have to plant in the ground, and then this grass. I know it looks dead, but it will come back to life. And another alicosia, and another alicosia there, and a Boston fern that will fill in the space. Think about height here, and then it will be symmetrical, even though I'm not a fan of symmetry, but uh, in this case, there's an opening, and that's the plant that I have. And then you swing around, and it will transition nicely to the tropical garden bed. And I know it's low light, but the burgundy or maroon color of this alicosia, or alicosia, complements the burgundy color of the stem of the eucalyptus. So because it's the garden of your dreams, it's gonna take some time. So we will come back and revisit each phase to check on the progress of creating this dream garden bed. Welcome Betty with Simple Southern Garden. Hey y'all and welcome back to my backyard today. Today I'm very excited about doing a video with some of my flower friends and we're going to do a collaboration again but our next collaboration is going to be about our dream garden. So I'm very excited to share with you today about my dream. So I was able to pick up the other day some of this lamium and it is really pretty silvery blue foliage with beautiful pink flowers on it. And this will make a beautiful ground cover. And then it also has, I would say like a uh, sister plant. And this is also another lamium. It has a little bit larger leaf, a little bit lighter, softer blue. And this one will have a little bit of a purple flower on it. So I'm hoping with these plants that they're gonna make a great ground cover to line the bed of our cottage garden. Okay, so the next one that I have is this beautiful Helen Von Stein lamb's ear. It's very soft. It adds that beautiful texture. It also will kind of create like a ground cover because it kind of spreads wide. Um, and you mostly grow this for the foliage. I think this one does have a little bit of a flower but the beautiful leaves is what we're gonna be growing this for. And I was so excited to be able to find this the other day. And these containers actually have like four babies inside of them. So they're very beautiful and healthy lambs here. The next thing that I'm really excited about is this ornamental oregano called Blamisio. Sounds like it's Italian. And it has a beautiful purple, almost like cluster-like blooms on it. Um, these are just babies. At the nursery, they, 
actually just brought these out the day we were there. So these are going to get very big. Um, they actually get six to eight inches and 18 to 24 inches tall. So they're going to be a nice little ground cover as we go along through the cottage garden. Okay, so as we're kind of going up from there, this is uh, a candy tuft. And it is very beautiful with the white and the yellow flowers. Okay, so after that, we have some of this beautiful, it's another ornamental oregano. So we have this ornamental oregano and this one here. As you can see, like I said, this is a baby plant still. But this ornamental oregano has beautiful pink to purple blooms and it gets 12 to 18 inches tall, space about 12 to 18 inches apart, zones five through nine, average to dry soil and drought tolerant. So very beautiful, full sun loving plant. We have some beautiful cat mint. Then from there, we have this beautiful drift rose. It's called an apricot drift. Uh, it has a beautiful apricot color blossom and it smells fantastic. It's so beautiful. Okay, so those were the plants that I bought the other day for our cottage garden. So this is the area that we're calling our cottage garden. We are right behind our house. This is one of my shade flower beds here. And as you can see, the house does cast a shadow on this back flower bed. So part of it will be shade and part of it will be full sun. So as you can see here, here are the tall guy arborvitaes. So between each tall guy, we have planted an incredible hydrangea all the way down. And my friend Kim with Backyard Blooms by Kim was a lot of my inspiration for doing this because she has arborvitaes and then she also has hydrangea. So they are very beautiful. And so I wanted to kind of copy her design. I'll show you what I dream of. I dream of having a stepping stone path through here. So we'll start here. Stepping stones as we come into the cottage garden with the beautiful arborvitaes and the Incredibles. And we've got like this little lane. And then as we go along, the lane will just kind of wrap around here. Then the path will just kind of wrap around here and it'll wrap back into the grass. We'll have all this beautiful area here to do lots of our plantings. So we'll have lots of pinks, purples, whites. We'll have the beautiful smell of the roses. We'll have the beautiful texture of the lamb's ear. And this is going to be our cottage garden. Doesn't look like much right now, but I can't wait until this summer when it's full of beauty. And I'll make sure that um, their links are going to be in the description. We hope that you enjoy them. And if you do, please consider subscribing to each of our page. Cause you know what, this is a thing. This is, this is about sharing information, our love for gardening and, you know, just building those relationships. Well, thank you again for visiting Inspiring Garden Corner. And I look forward to you checking out my next video. Mm -hmm.